Who do you call when you need somebody to accompany you on guitar for your open mic reading? Woo! Dwayne, baby. Who do you call to produce a director? Who do you recall to, to, to produce a director first music video when Morty Scorsese doesn't return your phone calls? Wayne Baby. Who's the guy to ask you to sing backup for your open mic singing debut? Wayne Baby. That's right. He's always there for all of us. Because he's such a sweet, giving guy, we tend to forget he's really a tremendous talent in his own right. So, Dwayne Baby, this is your spot. We all owe you, buddy. Please welcome our next Silver Tongue Devil, Dwayne Javon Ferguson. That's how I'm living, just chilling, standing on a ledge that high, mad high, overseeing a landscape of destruction and confusion, and I'm enjoying the view, oh man, I love the view! <laughs> man, how do we know when I'm in the flower, huh? How do we know our bodies aren't made to withstand the impact from a high free fall? How do we know that that ledge is made for climbing, to conquer, and because we put ourselves on this ledge, we don't already know how to climb it, yo! I'm standing on that ledge, just plain double dare with the wind. Push me, I say, with complete and utter confidence. Push me, I dare you, I double dare you, I triple double dare you with a green light and a jacket flag. Push me. You ain't got the guts. You ain't got the balls. Push me. You want to know why? Because I am not afraid to fall. God knows I ain't. See, people fall off because half the time. Ain't got no confidence in themselves. They don't believe in the magic of flight. Yo, I can fly, I can fly, and if I can't, so what? The thrill of plunging to my doom, the ecstasy, the velocity, the illusion of flight is more than enough to satisfy my hunger to prove I am not insatiable. Hey, yo, my man, I will die a complete and happy death. So come on. Let's get it over with. Let's just get it over with. Come on! Push me. La da 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 La da 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 bum ba dum ding. Ba ba da dum bum bum ba dum. I might have to bend over. Santi manite. Hello, ladies and gents. How do you do? Allow me to introduce myself to you. I am a West Indian Bohemian who happened to have a blue passport in hand. I was born in the States in 73, but in six short months, I don't reach Trini. Don't turn your back on yourself. Have respect for your culture. Zanti Maniti. Ba-da-da-dam, ba-da-dam, ding, ba-dam, ding. Ba-da-da-de-dam, bam, ba-dam, dam, yeah. Ba-da-da-da-dam, bing, ba-dam, de-dam, ba-dam, dam. Zanti Maniti. Born from a mother who trained patiently. To take care of other people's necessity. She studied in the finest universities and become a medical MP. But she makes sacrifices to be alone. One of those was sending she only child home. To turn on yourself. Have respect for your culture. Sante manite. Ba da 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 Santi Manite. Well, my grandmother raised me from a little seed to have faith in the Lord and be happy indeed. I was a normal, miserable little scamp. I can't tell a lie. I broke that lamp. Even though I was always making a mess, causing incessant bacchanal and commerce, I was never alone. My island was my only home. Santi Manite. As you double bam bam ba dam ding ba ding dam bim bam 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 da si dam ba dam bam Santi manite So now here I am in Nueva York Melting in the spot is my favorite spot Some might call me tourist and freshwater Yankee But I don't mean a thing, bread you know I easy Because in my blood I always trini No matter where I am, my island with me So do not do turn on yourself 
and have respect for your culture. Santi Manite. I would like to thank uh, the ancient mariner, the mariner of ancients, yeah. with or without his albatross, for inviting me to the inaugural ball of this thing. I'm very proud of being a silver tongued devil. It's going to look good in a resume, and it's going to be fun in dates. All right. So uh, I also want to acknowledge my fam, Inspired Word, Mike, Marvin, and all y'all. Love you guys. Thanks for coming. And my peeps, my peeps. But I ain't gonna waste time because I really wanted to hear everybody else. Because everybody else. I love open mic, so. And I'm eating up my 15 minutes. So, in that regard, I have a question. Uh, where are all the white people in the audience? I can't. Yeah, all, all the white people. I see all the white people in the audience. Okay, that's cool. All right, if you're white, that's fine. You can claim it. It's cool. I'm fearless. I got you. All right, so I want all the white people in the audience to repeat after me. Okay? <clears throat> I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. There you go. That's good. <laughs> Try it again. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Say it again. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. To say the word nigga. To say the word nigga. Boom! Y'all are brave. <laughs> you know brave. That. And I hope y'all don't ever go to Harlem. <laughs> hey, wait, Harlem. That's the wrong example, ain't it? I want all the white people to repeat after me. Y'all said it. Come on, really. You know, I really thought we was past this shit. Apparently not. But for the boys who were a little uncomfortable, for y'all that really didn't repeat the word, I mean, aren't we supposed to be taking the power out of that word? You know, black people's using it, ain't that like a fucked up status quo? I mean, I thought it was just America, yo. Come on, y'all, rise up. Let's squeeze the power out of this stupid ass word. Stop getting intimidated, white people. Stop pretending like you don't say the word while you're blasting all gold, everything in your Prius, you know. You know what I'm saying? I got gold up in my chain. I got gold up in my ring. Goals up in my watch. Don't believe this in my new <laughs> Don't lie. Come on. Didn't you get the memo? It's cool to say nigga now. You can win Golden Globes and Oscars when you white in Hollywood. You know, be unbound. Be unchained. What's the use of taking the power out of a word when it's still taboo to use it? I know, I know. Y'all created the word, and now you can't use it. That's powerful. But seriously, what has a nigga past ever done for me? You know what I mean? What power did I get for being able to have exclusive rights to one of the most vile words in the history of white vocabulary? I mean, a nigga still can't catch a cab. <laughs> nigga still can't be in an elevator without some bobby clutching a purse, or a nigga can't roll up to a cop asking for directions while reaching for his phone, or a nigga can't be in a bar without some Becky trying to holler, wondering when was the last time I'd ever tasted white meat, and if I wanted to indulge, niggas still get cock blocked by some Wall Street jealous ass pale ass pretty boy who has to hold on to his privilege and consolation prize for not being black or thug enough to try and play doctor to vanilla thrillers afflicted by jungle fever. Shit, it ain't my fault a nigga was born this way. <laughs> Now, come on, wouldn't it be cool if Lena Dunham dropped the nigger bomb on girls, you know? I mean, she got criticized for not chewing enough niggas on the show, set in motherfucking Brooklyn. Now, in the first episode, she was born in a nigger, a funny nigger, so maybe that'll work. Now, if we get enough young, hip, cool, award-winning, and influential white people to be comfortable saying the word nigger, then who knows? Maybe, just maybe, we can be comfortable, truly comfortable around each other. And maybe, just maybe, we can take the power out of other words, you know, like faggot, or spit, or kike, or dago, or wop, or wetback, being a child, gook. And don't worry about the Jewish Defamation League, the NAWCP, the LGBT community, man, fuck them niggas. And why stop there? We can take the power from other words, like elite, impoverished, Woo! urban, ghetto, privileged, conservative, declassified, Preach. uneducated, disenfranchised, and my favorite, what's that word that you use for, you know, immigrants now? Illegal. Illegals? Thank you. What backs? We use that one already like that. So white people, don't be scared of the word nigga. You can use that shit around me, Mike Geffner, you said it. I know you're comfortable. You know, Virilis, don't worry about it, Tennessee, bro. I'll come hang out with you, and you'll see what a real nigga looks like. And Marvin, yeah. I don't use it. I don't need it. It doesn't define me. But if it makes you feel better, just be free. Go to town, my white niggas. All right. Ladies, uh...
ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to disturb you. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I know it's a high crime to perturb you and disrupt you. Don't mean to tear you away from the iPads and nooks, headphones blasting, our crazy ass hooks. I feel your eyes rolling. I hear you groaning. I see you feeding your child and read your mouth moaning. Oh no, not another broke ass bum, lazy ass dude walking through these subway cars being crass and crude. Why can't I go through my day not being harassed by a crack sucking degenerate all in my ass? Your pockets may not be deep, but my life is shallow. I can't remember the last meal that accompanied my last swallow. Hollow, this life has made me ashamed of my life choices most certainly. But even then, I thank God that I have the strength to be pounding on these subway floors and content to be still open for the occasional smile that comes in once in a while. But most of these smiles fake and I gotta live with that. Be judged half a man and capable and all of that. Having to look at the top of people's heads all the time, debasing myself with nickel and dimes, asking myself, God, why, God, why must you use my life as fodder for your lies? So you don't have to pretend to be sleep. You don't have to worry about being too cheap. You don't have to be mad I ruined your day by pulling your ass away from 50 shades of gray because I don't need you. I'll be all right. Sure, I don't know where I'm going to sleep tonight, but wherever I'm going to be, it'll just be God and me. And I'll leave it to him to decide what tomorrow's going to be. Huh? Amen. What's that? All right, I'll, I'll take your dollar. That's a little something. Now, this don't make us friends or nothing. But thank you for helping me with my meal for tonight. Looks like tomorrow the sun might shine on me just a little right. Pretty boys, because they're assholes. I hate pretty boys because they're assholes. Effeminate alpha males who totally get by on their looks and their corny hooks with women swallow hook like and sinker. It's a stinker because I don't usually generalize like that, but it's a fact. Pretty boys are assholes. They don't even try looking all girly with their curly hair, smooth ass skin that's beyond compare. And every time I even dare complain about their freaking pretty staff, turn into some sort of hater. I just wish the world would be purged of penguin t-shirt wearing, soft eye staring, metrosexual fruit bear drinking, soft muscle, soft voice, fake ass gangster shit locks, converse canvas sporting studio in Williamsburg living, Windsor tie wearing, matching with jeans and beats having, excited looking GQ wannabe corny, hip hop quoting dubstep dancing fuckazoids that don't even know the meaning of the word rejection. Hey, I'm no hater, nah, nah. Cause some of my best friends are pretty boring motherfuckers. <laughs> it's true. Some can be cool, some can be kind, some can be real handy wingmen if they're so inclined. Some are poets, some are cooks, some can give you some real good fashion tips and know where to look. Some can be down to earth, cool ass brothers that I can talk sports with, got knowledge of sci fi that can't be fucked with, know the difference between Tatooine, Vulcan, and Gallifrey. Oh, I can see it's an issue I gotta deal with. But the world don't need no more gorgeous looking men that inhabit mirrors and give women jitters. Why? Ain't there enough guys putting holes before bros without having these pretty motherfuckers screw up the bro hole space time continuum? <laughs> I can't turn anywhere without seeing Brad Pitt, Zach Efron, Robert Pattinson, Bradley Cooper, Robert Rashad, Shamar Moore, Michael Ely, Kellen Lutz, and more of these no talent I'm batting Jaguars. I don't know personally, but it's quite clear to me how these cats got put on. All right, in all fairness. Not all pretty born motherfuckers, it's just a face. I can dig on some Johnny Depp. And even though Brad Pitt unleashed his long blonde hair in Legends of the Motherfucking Fall, and even had sisters going, oh, Tristan, take me to the ball, he got some chops. But otherwise, fuck all them pretty bitches. <laughs> I would rather be handsome, sophisticated, even cute than pretty. But God bless all y'all pretty motherfuckers, because without y'all, I couldn't tell which one of these broads were hollow. <laughs> Stop, stop, I'm wasting time. You Come got on. four minutes, plenty of time. Are you serious? Yes. Four? Oh, four, 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 four. Oh, oh, four minutes? Yeah. Shit. Now three minutes. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. I, see, I see Jarrell in the audience, so I'm going to do this one for Jarrell. She knows what you know what I'm up to. You know what I'm up to. Here we go. And then I'm going to. Ah, shit, four minutes. If love is blind, then you scratch my fucking eyes out. 
If beauty is skin deep, then your bones are scarred to the marrow. I shudder to think that when God made you in her image, she might have been on her period because the myriad of emotions on display have no reason to be as raw as you claim them to be. Oh, I think I see. Your illusion of confusion is simply a ruse to get your rocks off by claiming that my power is vested in knocking your life off, causing infinite amounts of pain that I oversee and sitting in a throne of imps and brimstone as I punish you with glee. Nah, you see, you got it twisted. I'm not nearly that gifted. I have your life in my hands being shaped by fingers all knotted and twisted, trying to squeeze all that that I can from your root to your fruit and make your life miserable and painful a boot? You are not the victim here. Oh, how easily you scare. Take away all the stench of bullshit and what is left is fear. Your fear of living in a stark and lonely life filled with nothing but self and strife and never again knowing that you are the love of anybody's life. Your version of love is to have a man growl at your feet, kissing your toes and sucking on them like a piglet on its mama only after you've walked in a barefoot mile and shit, pacing the rest of the father. Expunge from your mom, relenting, non-engaging, ever expanding body of lies and deceit that you have made all the more concrete by sealing your inner child away from any world that would make you any sort of lovable. If love is blind, then you scratch my fucking eyes out. Left me behind a blind man begging to have his heart stopped. But I would rather be blind in a world that sees my worth than be sighted in a world that conceived your birth. A world in which you mother shame and hate and lack of compassion. A world in which your idea of love is a fatal attraction. Love at first sight, shit, will remind me to blink. I never thought that contracted love would be signed in blood ink. I never thought the mother of my child would smash me to a million pieces. But I would rather be in a million genuine pieces than be glued together by a false adhesive. If love is blind, then you scratch my fucking eyes out. Bled me dry and left me to motherfucking rot. Turn the page, man. I'm a goddamn movie. You better turn this goddamn page right now. All right. And what you don't know is that Carl was a bitch. And what I know about a bitch is that they don't be playing, bitch. And you don't score the bitch unless you want your life to be about a bitch. So leave me the fuck alone and let me lick my wounds. Let me go about my business. Let me turn my tune. Let me walk in the world and go by duff, uh, darkness and black. You scratch my fucking eyes out, but at least my hateful heart is blank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One more. One more. Oh, one more. One more. All right. All right. Conflagration, man. Oh, my God. One more. Here we go. I over prepared for this shit. <laughs> one more. One more? One more? Right. One more? Damn it. Here we go. <laughs> hey, douchebag with the greasy hair, wearing your pointy shoes. Congratulations, you are part of America's new elite. Guess what? Nobody likes you. You think you're hot shit because you wear a suit to the office? Your cell phone attached to your hands, your briefcase houses an iPad too. Guess what, fucker? Nobody likes you. You take the L train to your fancy bigs in a neighborhood that was built on the backs of hardworking blue collar people, all of who were priced out of their parents' parents' home to make room for your money clipping, cocaine sniffing, period drinking, house party throwing, roofie dropping, frat boy ass. You don't thank them. You just thank God that you can walk out of your home and find a yoga shop that doesn't require you to walk more than a block. Well, lucky for you, you dizzy motherfucker, but guess what? Nobody likes you. You go out on weekends and impress dumb bitches who either make what you make or as fake as what you fake. Then you talk, your best game, or comparatively lame, mixing up your Collins Dictionary private school education job and speak with the freshest, latest urban street slang plucked directly from the pages of world star hip-hop. Oh, and you're so hip-hop. At least that's the game you be running on these dumbass, corporate-ass, slob knob and Wall Street corporate snobby ass trick ass bitches. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, rather. Independently minded, focused, and driven young women of the new millennium that happen to suck dick for and take it in the ass for riding the Bentley. Yeah, that's the life surrounded by oodles and oodles of enablers and hangers on that would like nothing more than to lead you to believe that you are really and truly loved. In fact, you're an act. A Trojan horse waiting to be mounted and used for so grandiose enactments of Roman bacchanalian revelry when in fact they are enacting the best type of thievery, polishing up a new kind of slavery, taking your worth and self-esteem and putting a price on it. But your value has dropped, your chips are in, and my friend, your total worth is somewhere in between the patriotic colors of the red, white, and blue monopoly money and the value you put upon the cats begging for chain on the very same L train you ride and scheme on, trying to get to impress chicks with the tablet you read on and just going on to work for the same fat cat that is getting fat of the dollars and cents that you make in this chase, rat after rat you pass in this race and then you sell your soul to stay ahead in this space, how in the hell do you look a mirror in the face? And after all that said and done and gone and you're dead and wrong, who will be there to right your wrongs and keep your legacy strong? But you don't need nobody, right? Because you are America's elite. Six figure under 40, close to six feet deep.
Too bad you didn't open up your heart enough to let somebody find you. But that's right, motherfucker. Nobody likes you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.